This year, Coronation Street is exploring the heartbreaking story of Paul being diagnosed with motor neurone disease and the effects that the condition is having on him and his loved ones. Here today to speak about his character Billy's role in the story, as well as reflect on nearly a decade on the street, is actor Daniel Brockenbank. Dan, welcome to the podcast. Hello. How are you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. It's lovely to have you on here. Yeah. Thank uh, you very much for having me. Eight years, I think you've been on the show now, haven't you? Uh, nine years nine in is it? September. It will be nine years in September. Yeah. Wow. Uh, glad we finally managed to grab hold of you for the podcast at last. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm glad you finally grabbed me. <laughs> uh, so, um, we, we got plenty to talk about, obviously, with, with nearly nine years of Billy stuff. But I wanted to start by discussing the current storyline where Billy's partner, Paul, is being has been diagnosed with MND. Now, yes. I know you've, you've spoken in other interviews about um, your personal connection with this condition. But for listeners that maybe haven't been keeping up, what can you tell me about this? Uh, well, um, 20, nearly 22 years ago, my grandfather was diagnosed with motor neurons disease. Mm -hmm. um, and back then, uh, in terms of diagnosis for MND, things were very different. Uh, we've moved quite a, quite a way in terms of people's diagnoses um, happening uh, a lot sooner. In fact, he was only diagnosed a week before he died. Right. So um, we we nursed him for two years, not really knowing what um, what he had. Um, however, since then, um, I've been working with the Motor Neurons Disease Association. I'm now an ambassador for the charity. So having <clears throat> spent 20 odd years um, quite heavily involved with the MND Association and having been part of a family that nursed a loved one with MND, uh, to be presented with this particular storyline was a little bit of a shock. Um, yeah. The, yeah, the producers, they didn't know uh, my, <coughs> excuse me, my history with MND or the charity. So when it was first proposed to me, I was, I was a, I was a little taken aback, mm. um, uh, to say the least. Um, however, I feel incredibly honoured to be presented with this storyline. Um, it feels, it feels, it feels very, it's strangely beautiful in a weird way. I've met many people with MND over the years since since my grandfather passed. And um, it feels like quite a beautiful way to be able to commemorate him and uh, the other people that I've known with MND sure. over the years. So it, it's um, feels it's. I mean, I'm, I'm devastated to be losing Peter, hmm. uh, but it does feel it feels strangely beautiful to be able to um play this out publicly having having been somebody that was part of a family that cared for somebody living with MND to now play Billy um yeah. as somebody uh, caring for somebody living with MND it's it's a strange I, in in I've, I've, been, I've been an actor for 30 years and it's such I've, I don't think I've ever played anything so close to home before mm. Mm. Um, has, it been, has it been quite overwhelming at times playing something that is close to home like you say it has and it's it's um it's brought back a lot of memories and it's brought back um a lot of emotion in some ways not just for me but also for my family as well I mean I'm the way that we work at Corey they know what we're doing a lot further in advance than what we know yeah um, and then once I was told what was happening, of course, I couldn't tell my family for quite some time. Uh. <laughs> but when it came close to the release and the press release, um, I did have to speak to my, it was my mum's dad who had MND. Um, and I had to speak to my mum and uh, her brother and sister and say, look, how, how, how much of this do you feel comfortable with me sharing? Because this was such a, a brutal, familial experience. How, 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 how can I, you know, share this without impacting on you guys? And 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 they were all very, very um, supportive and 
happy for me to share it because I think we're all very well aware that, you know, the more information there is out there, the, the closer we may come to a cure. So they were all very comfortable with me to share our our family experiences, which I was grateful of. But I had to kind of I had to hold it very close to myself for quite some time before I could tell them. Mm. Um, but it's yeah, it, it has. It's brought back a lot of memories. I mean, Peter's performance is 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 fantastic, and obviously we're shooting quite a, a way ahead of what you're seeing on screen. So. <sighs> In terms of Paul's debilitation, um, what is now on screen is very different to what I'm working with day to day. And uh, Peter is incredible. Um, he, his portrayal of somebody living with MND is, is absolutely fantastic. Um, but that has inevitably um, triggered quite a few memories. Mm. Mm. have your family yeah. been watching it play out on screen as well indeed my mother's watched cory since she was a little girl she can't oh. remember ever watching cory yeah so um mum watched it long before i was in it mm -hmm. um so yeah so i get regular texts and voice notes um <laughs> <laughs> regarding the, the show and my performance yeah is, and and how, what's her reaction been to watching this? Has she found that difficult, or and, and does she think that it's being done well? Yes, she thinks it's being done very well. Um, and yeah, it, it's been it's been emotional, and not not just for my mom, but for for other people I know who are either caring for somebody that's living with MND, or who have lost um, loved ones with MND. Um, I think it's quite a hard watch. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Yeah. How, how have you found the reaction from viewers? Because this has been playing out for a couple of months now, hasn't it? Yeah. Um, it's been mixed. I mean, I, I think on the whole, it's been incred incredibly positive. Mm. Um, there have been some people that have said they can't watch it because it's bringing up too much emotion. Other people who are very, very thankful that we are highlighting this as a subject. Mm. The thing is with Corey, like, you know, it's a very loved show. It's it's a British institution. Um, and there will always be things that we do that some audience members don't like. Yeah. Some audience members love. You know, it, you, you can't always please everybody. No. Um, but I think with this particular storyline, I think it's, it's hard hitting for those that have had an experience of MND in their personal lives yeah and I think you could it, say the same thing for say Sinead's story and Haley's story oh, goes back a little bit longer as well yeah of course of course so and and again I think with either Sinead's or Haley's story or this one you're always going to get that juxtaposition with people who are watching it and going oh my god I can totally relate to that and other people who go oh my god I relate to that I can't watch it yeah it's yeah. you know they're important stories to tell aren't they they are they and are for for every um real life illness like this, you've then got your serial killer murdering people with hole punches. So of course, <laughs> you've got some balance. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <Sorry. laughs> so tell, tell me about how the MND Association have been working alongside Corey for this story. Well, I mean, obviously they've been in consultation and uh we've had several meetings with them. We've um had meetings with people who are living with MND. Mm -hmm. Pete's, Pete's. I think Pete's in much more discussion with them than I am because, obviously, as 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 the person portraying somebody living with MND, he is the one that's having to show the physical deterioration and then, in turn, what that does mentally, emotionally. Um, weirdly, because I've lived this, um, I've not actually been in touch with the MND Association as much yeah um so uh it's it's I think it's it for Pete it's more of a research mm. thing um for me I'm I'm really just drawing on on personal experience but then again my personal experience was very different from Billy's personal experience so 
Um, I mean, I, I'm I'm entering this storyline with a huge amount of uh, of knowledge of, of of MND and of caring for somebody with MND, but Billy isn't. Yeah. So there's there's a huge difference between the two of us. Sure, sure. Now, one of the challenges that I know soaps have to contend with when they have storylines whose aims are to raise awareness of um, serious issues like this is they can't lose sight of the fact that they're an entertainment show as well. And, and you've got your soap opera tropes that are expected. So, you know, for the Acid storyline recently, we've seen Ryan and Daisy kiss. With the M&D storyline, we've had Paul turning to crime, keeping his secret a diagno uh, his diagnosis a secret. The, the the thing with Zach at the hotel recently. So, do you think it's important that Coronation Street does keep those soapier elements as well, for lack of a better word, in in these issue led stories? I think it's important that we never lose sight of the fact that what we're watching is entertainment. Mm. Um, Corrie's Corrie, and it, it, with with a show like Coronation Street, we have the opportunity to highlight issues, educate people, uh, invoke conversation. But at the same time, we should never lose sight of the fact that we are essentially here to entertain people. Yeah. Um, and Corey has always had the brilliant balance of comedy and drama. It's that's what has maintained the show for, you know, 60 plus years. Yeah. So um, despite having uh, a, a, an incredibly heavy storyline like uh, Pete and I are playing currently, it's really important that the show maintains a balance of, of entertainment, comedy, and then what we're playing with this storyline. But also with this storyline, it's important that we also maintain some humour because even if you are living with MND, if you're caring for somebody with MND, there's still going to be moments of lightness. There's still yeah. going to be moments of hilarity because that is life. Absolutely. And I, I, I love so like the, the wedding was great. The the left-handed darts match that you did recently, the chili contest, stuff like that. Yeah. Because I think even if you're living with somebody who has a terminal illness, you don't focus on that illness the entire time. There are still moments where you're just living and life does produce humor and lighter moments so it's it's important that we as a show maintain those moments as well sure sure well hopefully there's still more to come as well in the story there's plenty more plenty <laughs> more to come yeah so, I, mean, would, I, would I, you... I wish i could tell you what we've been filming this week I can't... <laughs> <laughs> where, where are you up to now are you kind of august mid-august at the moment um no not quite quite it's a beginning of august we okay, are okay i'll look forward to that then so yeah. um, would you say that so far billy has been a supportive partner to paul do you think he's doing a good job yes um i mean bearing in mind what we've seen this week i know we can discuss what's going out this week because this won't go out until sure. next, <laughs> so i know that we can discuss what's going out this week <laughs> um obviously we've seen this week paul having a, a little dabble with somebody else in a hotel room mm -hmm. um, and um, Billy kind of trying to get his head around that. And I think <laughs> Billy is obviously his job as a vicar is to be incredibly caring. Mm. I think Billy messes up quite a lot of the time. I think he he tries incredibly hard, but I don't think he always gets it right um but this situation is different because this isn't just pastoral care this is he, he he's in love with this person so it's a different thing he can't just be a vicar or an archdeacon in this case he he is a partner uh whilst also trying to be a father and and everything else so it's 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 a different it's a different thing for him. Um, I think he's doing his best. Sure. And I think um, he does always try to do what he thinks is best. It may not necessarily be what is best, <laughs> but I do. <laughs> he does try. <laughs> but that's that's good. That's all you can do, isn't it? Um, yeah. so he, he's been showing a lot of concern recently for the fact that Paul hasn't been baptised. So is that something that you think he's going to be pushing quite hard for? Well, for him, I mean, you know, in his belief system, if you're not baptised, you don't go to heaven. Mm. And with a looming uh, death, which obviously Paul 
eventually will have con uh, when you take into consideration the condition. Mm. Um, I think it does concern him because in his mind, when he eventually passes, whenever that is, he wants to meet him on the other side. Yeah. And so for Billy, I think him pushing the baptism is... Um, it's important on a spiritual and religious level, yeah. um, but also it's important that he that, that Paul does it for his own wants rather than just because Billy wants him to. Now Paul's not religious at all. No, we've seen Billy's uh, Billy's pushing the the, the christening. Bernie's hiding her crystals. Paul's belief system is neither of the above. Yeah. Um, and you can't force somebody to 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 follow your no. belief system um hence the reason why paul rushed off and had a, a little fling with exactly <laughs> in that hotel room. um but I, th I think for billy it is important but it's also just as important that paul is following his own path as well um as i said billy never quite gets it right <laughs> he must be doing something right if he's been made archdeacon though i suppose oh he must be i mean yeah he did. <laughs> do you do you see billy's faith being more a source of comfort or friction as the story progresses oh my goodness um both mm. equally both actually i think his i think his faith may be a comfort to himself but that would then cause friction with Paul because Paul doesn't have that belief system. So I, 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 in, the, in the way that Billy approaches things, he will come, up, come to, you know, to that conclusion from his own faith, but then therefore can't expect Paul to totally buy into it. Sure, sure. I remember um, after Sinead died, you were given a really lovely prayer to read out. I think um, Ellen Taylor wrote that episode. Um, it'd be I think it'd be quite a powerful scene if Billy got something like that, sort of praying for Paul's soul or, or, or whatever as the yeah. coming weeks. That was a beautiful scene when Billy went to visit Sinead. Um, I spoke to Ellen about it, actually. We went out for a drink. It, and it was a couple of years ago. So it would have been year, a couple of years after Sinead's death. Oh, okay. And it's it, inevitably with something like Corrie, where you're shooting 12 episodes every two weeks, you know, it, 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 it keeps going, it keeps going, it keeps going. But there are certain scenes that really stick with you. And that scene where B Billy visited Sinead on her deathbed was one of them for me. Uh, and I still remember the dialogue quite well. Um, Sinead said she was scared that there would be nothing. Yeah. And Billy said, well, maybe there's a peace in nothing. Mm. Maybe maybe the good guys get nothing. Maybe it's the bad guys that get eternal life. It was such a beautiful take on what potentially is the afterlife. Um I don't know whether Billy will be able to be so philosophical with Paul. It's different. Again, Sinead was a member of his flock, mm. um, whereas Paul is his partner. And I think, I, 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 I wonder, of course, I, I'm in no control at all. None of us are in any control at all about how we're written, mm. how the characters are written. We are told what to say. <laughs> we have choice in how we say it, but even then, there are parameters in terms of moving the story on and 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 character uh, restrictions. So it's it, it's it's I'm hugely interested in to, to see how this is is going to evolve. Mm. Uh, yeah, it makes me wonder whether he's going to have another you know crisis of faith because he, he already stepped down from the clergy at one point, didn't he? A few years ago, it makes me twice, wonder that's going twice. On. There was once was with Sean. Yeah, there was once with Sean. Um, it was boyfriend or God. And then the same with Todd, hmm. um, where he wanted Todd to move into the vicarage uh, and he was oh, told yes. that was not. So then they ended up moving into the flat above Preston Petals, which is, of course, where Billy still lives. Hmm. Um, so he's had a couple of crises of faith, but uh, over a relationship sense this time. Um, because, of course, the, the whole... 
the gay relationship in the Church of England thing is still quite a, a grey oh. area. <laughs> speaking, speaking of the church, um, I, I really like that we got to go back to St Mary's a couple of weeks ago for Gemma's wedding. Yes. Uh, I, I know having spoken to members of the cast before that sometimes wedding episodes can be a bit of a drag and there's lots of sitting around. But I mean, was, was this one nice to do for you? It was great. It was great. It was lovely to be back in the church. <laughs> Considering Billy is a vicar, we we rarely see him doing oh. vicary things. <laughs> um, you, you dish out soup, um, Dan. What, that, that's all the big vicars do, isn't it? Just dish out soup for, for the home. He does good soup. He does amazing <laughs> soup. Amazing soup. I, it's, I think during all the the COVID nonsense, it was very. We we weren't allowed to shoot oh. off site, so there was a couple of years there where we were very restricted to only shooting with what we had available to us. Um, I would love Billy to be seen doing more vicary things yeah. um uh however we do just see him sort of uh, wandering about wearing his dog collar more or not uh, not doing vicary things mm. he's either in the pub or in roy's rolls or you know whatever <laughs> uh, but um it was wonderful i mean Gemma's wedding was fab i loved doing it i i think you might be able to tell me if i'm oh. wrong but i think that may be the first successful wedding that Billy has ever conducted. <laughs> it, may, it might well be because it was. I think, I think all of them have been disrupted at some point prior to the actual I do. I think you're right Billy because it, most most of the weddings these days on Coronation Street take place at the hotel or the bistro, which yeah. Billy wouldn't be doing. But yeah, I, yeah. I think it's the, the first one in a good long time that <laughs> he's certainly done more wed uh, funerals and christenings than he's done weddings. But I do think that Gemma's wedding may be the first one that <laughs> has actually got to I do, and has had the I now pronounce you man and wife. Yeah. Uh, but it was great. I mean, you know, Dolly's Gemma's dress was just incredible, wasn't it? Wasn't it? Great? Um, and uh, the whole thing was lovely. And the thing is, when you're out on location, it's like a school trip. It's so nice for all of us to get out. I mean, we love being there, but it's so lovely to have everybody out for the day or a couple of days doing something a bit different, you know. And 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 you're right. I mean, the weddings and things like that. When they, when there's a lot of people, it is a lot slower, and it it is you know they're long days to shoot. What essentially becomes forty five seconds on screen, it's taken us six hours to shoot. <laughs> it is you know they're long days, but it is always nice to get out and about. Mm. And uh, speaking of weddings, are we going to be maybe hearing any wedding bells for you and uh, for, for Billy and Paul before this storyline ends? Who can say? Who can say? I mean, as I said to you, I am not in control of uh, what is, is happening in the, the storyline. So uh, we will just have to wait and see what the right... Corey's got close to gay weddings before with um, Sophie and Sean and then yeah. Rana and Kate. But again, never actually quite made it to the... Uh, to never the quite made it, but they're all, they were all lesbian time. weddings. So maybe this oh, one yeah, with, well. with two men, maybe... Maybe, maybe, that's the, maybe that is the trick. actually yeah. make it down the aisle, if indeed it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, whatever moments of happiness are ahead for this story we know that there's no way it's going to have a happy ending like you said and whether it comes I don't know the next 12 months or even three years down the line we know Paul's not getting out of this alive so how do you feel about the prospect of having to perform what's going to be some really gut-wrenching scenes I think it's gosh from a from an acting perspective um I think the thing is with this with this storyline, for me as a person, not as an actor, as a person having gone through this with my own family, mm. there is uh, there is such a personal connection to this storyline um, on on so many levels. Then, as an actor. Therefore, you feel there is a huge responsibility to portray this with truth and integrity on, on every level. Yeah. But obviously, the way that I would react to things is not necessarily the way that Billy would react to things. So it's not until I get my script, which is only two weeks before we shoot them, mm. as to I find out how Billy is going to be reacting to or being involved in these, these particular situations. So... 
Um, I, I, how it, I, I, I don't know how it will unfold. So it's difficult to sort of um, picture really what what I'm going to have to do or what I'm going to have to bring to the table. But I just I, I hope that we do it justice. Mm -hmm. um, so far from um, the conversations that I've had with people on the streets and things like that, not necessarily online, particularly Twitter, people can be particularly mean <laughs> can, can. so um i would rather judge from the actual face-to-face -face conversations that i have with people rather than the uh keyboard warrior <laughs> we think your shit messages that we get <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. How, um, how do, you, do you know how how pete's feeling about it because and it's uh, I, I can't imagine that it's going to take an awful lot of uh, acting when you're right, he's doing a brilliant job, but just thinking about, you know, this far down the line, I'm going to have to be portraying somebody mm. with, with this really debilitating addition. How's, how's he feeling about it? I think, I mean, Pete is awesome. He's, I, I love him to bits and I'm, I genuinely am gutted that uh, we will at some point not be able to be working together mm. um but he you know he's he is he, he's he's a very positive person and i think his sort of um the the way that pete approaches stuff is is with such fine tuning he he wants to get it right i think that's his main uh, point he want he he wants to make sure that he is absolutely portraying this with a hundred percent realism. Yeah, the thing is with MND that it, it affects people in such different ways. So in that respect, we as a as a team at Coronation Street have a little bit of artistic license in terms of how Paul progresses with the illness. Um. You know, some it, so so therefore, um, Pete has a, a a small amount of freedom in terms of how uh, he's he's playing it in terms of what we're given script wise. Yeah. Um, but he, he's doing an amazing job, and I I think you know over the coming months, obviously the disease will progress, and that will there in for in turn affect how he is playing Paul mm. but I have no qualms that he will be he will be pulling it all out yeah he's doing great and so are um, Jane and Dolly as well it's giving them something yeah. different than the norm to work with isn't it indeed indeed and I think with characters like Bernie and Gemma which are so you know they're larger than life sort of bright colorful characters to have them embroiled in such a a heavy storyline is brilliant because it you're seeing them in a in a totally different light um and you know jane and, and dolly are, are fantastic so we're, we're again we're getting to see them pull in different levels of performance mm -hmm. okay let's let's move on and talk about some of your other stuff um okay. I, couldn't, I couldn't chat with you today without mentioning the whole falling off a cliff on christmas day incident <laughs> yeah <laughs> so but do you remember your reaction when you found out what you'd be doing when people were tucking into their turkey dinners that year? Well, I first I thought that I was going to be written out of the show when <laughs> I first found out that that was happening. Most, most people don't survive falling off a cliff. No, nobody that. had God on his side, you see. I mean, that was the, uh, that was the great thing. Um, when I first found out about it, Kate Oates was producing then and she phoned me up and she said, can I meet you for a drink? There's some stuff I want to discuss with you. So <laughs> went out for a few beers with Kate. And she told me, and I was like, am I, is this, is this it? Is this the end? And she was like, oh my God, no, 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 it's not. But this is what we're doing. So to, to bring the provenance of the character of Billy 16 years prior to his entrance into the show mm. um, was incredibly clever. I mean, just to weave that into the history of, of, of Corrie and the death of Susan, which had obviously never explained and all that kind of stuff um I was incredibly excited about it incredibly I mean to be to be part of a Christmas day episode now I grew up in a household where we never missed Corrie on Christmas day yeah Corrie Christmas day you'd, you'd finished your your dinner you'd you'd 
everybody was full of cherry or whatever alcohol they'd consumed that day. Obviously not as a child, of course, my parents. <laughs> yeah. But Cory Christmas Day episode was, you know, Cory Christmas Day episode. You didn't miss it. They're the big ones, aren't they? They're the big ones. So to be told that I was going to be part of it and not just part of it, but part of it in such a large way was incredibly exciting. To be honest, playing a vicar, I, I didn't expect that to be my first sort of major involvement. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, I thought yeah. it'd be in a church delivering a sermon somewhere. But um, the it was such an exciting few days. Uh, I mean, I love Chris Gascoigne. Adore working with him. Adore going out for pints with him. He's, he's, he's a beautiful man. So, and, and the thing is as well, when you're on location, normally it would be like Gemma's wedding. There'd be loads of you out. So to have just a couple of you out with the crew is a kind of different experience to just having 30 of you out and crew. Yeah. Um, I remember being quite insistent with Kate that if we were going to do what we were going to do, that I wanted to do it myself. Right. And she was like, no, insurances, we can't. <laughs> and I was like, no, if you're going to chuck me off a cliff, I want to do it. Can we find a way to allow it to be me as much as possible? Yeah. I'd like to I'd like to do it. Um, we did have a stuntman on, well, with a few stuntmen there, but a, a one particular that was looking similar to me, just in case I bottled it at the last minute. <laughs> um, but they did find a way for me to do it um and it was thrilling it was really really exciting to be we were in the peak district somewhere i think somewhere in buxton if mm. my memory serves me correctly um and they did find a way to make it possible for me to do it myself um in 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 the end they had a, a scaffold uh, scaffolding built up against the side of the quarry yeah. covered in green material with a crash mount I, it, I think I fell back about eight feet you know it wasn't a huge amount but it, I mean it was big enough you yeah, know yeah, um but it was it was thrilling and I didn't as, as I said my mother is a massive curry watcher mm. of course I I can't and don't tell them what is going on in in the show yeah. um and all I'd said to my mom was that I was quite heavily involved in the Christmas Day app and <laughs> I'd done all my own stunts. That was that's all I'd said. <laughs> and of course, prior to Christmas Day, Billy had been locked up in the boot of Peter's car. Yeah. Drunk on vodka. Pete, uh, Peter had forced vodka down his neck and, <laughs> and locked him in the boot of his car. And there was just before Billy slipped off the edge of the cliff. Uh, Peter drags him out of the back of the car and I'm sat with my family watching it on Christmas day we're all there <laughs> of turkey and whatever else and uh mum was sat in front of me on the floor in a beanbag <laughs> and uh as as Chris uh, as, as Peter dragged Billy out of the boot sort of threw him on the floor mum turned back to me and she said oh is that what you meant by your own stunts I went mum just Watch it. <laughs> and then Billy dropped off the edge of the cliff. And my mum went, no! like screamed at the television. I mean, it cut to commercial break. And she turned to him and went, oh, my God, oh, my God. Have you lost your job? Is that it? <laughs> my dad sat next to me on the couch. And he went, he's been filming this week. Of course he hasn't lost his job. Like, he'd have been gone months ago if he didn't. Yeah. And she was like, oh, my God. No mother should ever have to watch her son drop off the edge of the cliff. <laughs> like, oh, um, but it was it was brilliant. I loved that. I did. I I loved that. Yeah, great. So <laughs> the story did lead to some rather dark stuff for Billy, didn't it? And I I, I love yeah. it when Harry goes dark, but that was particularly bleak. What Billy faced after the fall, wasn't it? It was. It was a a well, an unexpected prescription drug addiction which then yeah. led into a, a, a stuff that was a little harder um quite unexpected um from my perspective 
we, as I said, we we are never we, we're always at the mercy of what the writers throw at us. So my my job is to take what the writers give us, and 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 bring it to you know to to life with the character. Mm. Um, and sometimes when you're faced with things, you think, what? Like, oh my god, really? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> Didn't I totally didn't see it coming that that going in that direction? But that's of course what they want because that's when the audience sit there and go, <gasps> yeah, <laughs> it got people talking about it. <laughs> yeah, so it, it definitely went in a direction that I was not expecting. Um, but again, this you know after after thirty years of doing this for a living, this is what I adore about being in something like Corrie or adore being in mm. Corrie because. There is so much variety in terms of what you get to play. It, 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 there is comedy with Corey. There is drama. There is the darkness. There's the lightness. There's and everything in between. So it it is an absolute gift of a gig to get because you you get to stretch all of your uh, artistic wings, and then you get to be surrounded by a group of people that you absolutely bloody adore. And, you know, I, <laughs> there are days, I mean, it's, it don't get me wrong. Some days it's, it's hard work. You know, you work in seven till seven and that's not the prep time on top of that's just the, yeah, what yeah, you're shooting. Like learning your scripts and all so, that. So, yeah. So sometimes, you know, you're in bed by 9 PM and I'm up at five and you've, and then you've still got to eat, walk the dogs, clean your house, take your rubbish out, do your laundry, <laughs> learn your lines. Like, you're still going to have a life. Yeah. Um, but you get into that building and despite how heavy uh, the subject matter is, which of course at the moment is quite heavy, you, you're incredibly fortunate to be surrounded by the most beautiful group of people. I know it sounds really wanky, like everybody always says, it's, oh, it's like, uh, but it's true. It is like being in a family. These people are amazing. I've, 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 as I said, done this for 30 years. And for the majority of that 30 years have been spent shooting six months, three months, doing plays, maybe a couple of years, like the longest stretch before Corey really was maybe two years with the Royal Shakespeare Company or uh, did a couple of years on Emmerdale or, you know. But to, to forge real beautiful friendships with people over, over, over a massive period of time, like I've been able to do on Corey, is like the biggest gift in the world and you've met enough of us now oh yeah it's, it is it, it, he's not lying though. it is very much like a family when you go to yeah. coronation street everyone's so welcoming it's true <laughs> it's it's beautiful and you know when we're whenever we get guest artists coming in and it's terrifying even even you know starting on uh, your first day on on cory is terrifying yeah because you know it so well you know the sets the actors everything else so you walk on and it's so overwhelming yet everybody is so warm so welcoming funny relaxed you know and it's not just the actors the crew like these the, the people that you don't see mm. we i adore them we adore them like they are they're as much a part of the show as we are yeah you guys just don't get to see their faces and you know the, the banter it, that goes on is phenomenal mm. um it it is a truly beautiful place to work i feel genuinely blessed to have been a part of it for the best part of a decade i really do it's lovely it's lovely you you mentioned before about all the other stuff that you've done before Corey and the stage and, and everything now we do know that you've got a good set of pipes on you and one of the things that i really loved a happier Christmas for Billy is when you were there tinkling the old ivories in the Santa oh, yes. Victoria Street a few years ago. Do you wish you like, had more of an opportunity to just burst into song? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thing was with with it's, no. So so my my playing the piano and my singing skills were very much um, kind of under wraps. Really, <laughs> I trained in musical theatre. Um, but never really worked in musical theatre. Right. I played a piano. There's one just down here at the end of the room, which you can't actually see because of the angle, but it's my grandmother's, what was my grandmother's piano down there. 
Mm -hmm. um, I've been playing the piano since I was seven. I've always sang. Um, and it wasn't until uh, I did, well, All Star Musicals was yeah, the first course. time that I ever really sang in public. And um, Ali Sinclair, who's um, head of press for, for Corey, mm -hmm. um, I said to her, are they, are they recommissioning All Star Musicals? And she said, yeah. I said, would, would you suggest me for it? And she went, it's a singing show. I said, yeah, I know. Said, well, do you sing? And I said, well, I do. Yeah. She was like, what do you mean? I said, well, I play the piano as well. And she went, what? Why didn't we know this? I said, well, because I've been playing a Northern Vicar for you for the last sort of <laughs> seven or eight years. And nobody's ever asked. So um, it, would, would you suggest me for it? Of course, you know, that, that I love doing that show. And it, I, I went on to win the, the, the yeah, competition. Having said that, once that happened, suddenly... Billy could sing and play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> so, of course, the writers, you know, of course, why wouldn't they yeah. suddenly discover that you as a performer could do something and then integrate that with the character? Of course, why not? Absolutely. And I, I did love the storyline where, where they got a piano in the flat. Oh, yes. And the flat was burgled yeah, and the yeah, piano yeah. was smashed up. I think we only had the piano for one episode. And I was like... <laughs> um, Having said that, to answer your question, when we were shooting the Christmas episode where they wheel the piano out into the middle of the street and Billy plays a myriad of, of, of Christmas carols and everybody joined and, you know, what was joyful about that for us was the fact, because of all the COVID nonsense, it was the first time that we were allowed as a company, I mean, we were yeah. all still two metres apart, I think, at that point, but th there were 22 of us in, in that scene. Mm. And it was the first time in about two years where we'd, al we'd been allowed to be mm. together. I think the fact that we were outside was the reason we were allowed to do it, but we were allowed to do it and it, that was lovely for us however because we shoot so far ahead in 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 terms of what you guys see it would have been about the beginning of september so from the middle of august i was sat in here rehearsing christmas <laughs> <laughs> so my neighbors would have been like what the hell is he doing He's, it's August and he's like, and I was sat in here batching out That's Christmas so cool. carols that I then had to play. <laughs> so they're they're going to just be coming back to you now. That Back in the day, like Ina Sharple played the piano. I think Jack, yeah. Dunn, I think quite a few of the, the cast oh, were back then. Yeah, I think back in those days, a lot more people played instruments. Yeah, yeah. You know? I mean, I don't, I there, there are very few people that I know who who still have a, an actual piano in their house. Mm. The only person that I can think of that actually still has a piano in their house is Julia Goulding, who plays Shona. Yeah. Julia. Is she, is she? Is she? Yeah, her her husband, they have a piano in their house. Other than that, off the top of my head, I don't know anybody else actually has an actual piano. <laughs> yeah, my, my sister's got one, if that counts, rather than... It does, totally counts. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, and on Coronation Street, I think I think the Baileys have got a piano in their lounge still at the moment. They do, but I've never, never seen them play it. No, no. Never seen them play it. And well, and then of course you got your organ at church, so maybe we just need to have a story where the organist drops dead in the middle of a service or something. And Billy's like, "Don't yeah, worry, everyone, I've got this." Playing an organ is very different to playing a piano. They're very I different. I mean, that's two sets of like <laughs> keys there. Like, <laughs> so you've had such an incredibly busy time of late because there was all the all the summer stuff last yeah. year. Do you enjoy being busy like this on on the screen? Yes, I would much rather be busy than than not. Mm. Um, I'm I'm happy. I honestly, I yeah, I spring out of bed in the morning when I'm going to work. I can't wait. Mm. I love it. I love it. I, every day when I drive into that studio, I can't believe my luck. It it's still after all these years, I'm still like, oh my god, this is where I work. Like this is awesome. <laughs> um, I'm much happy. The thing is with 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 being a creative, I think you sort of feel purposeless when you're not, when there's nothing to be creative with. Yeah. 
Um, and because of the the the, the, the constructs of the uh, the contract, I mean, we can do other stuff outside of, but because of the way that we're contracted, it's very difficult to fit other stuff in. Mm. Um, you know, and you know, as viewers, you will notice that sometimes characters do just drop out of the show for yeah. a month or two months here and there. But it's very difficult to kind of fit other stuff into that couple of months. Like you, yeah. so. You know, as much as it's you know lovely to have a little bit of time off, like I would rather I would rather be busy always. Um, you know, a, a few days here and there off is is delightful, but I'm definitely happier when I'm when I'm busy. And because I'm blessed with such a, a beautiful group that I work with, because it's quite transient, Corey. Sometimes there's people you don't see mm. weeks sometimes because you're not you're not in the same storylines. <laughs> So unless you bump into them in the canteen or the green room, you don't see him. Mm. Um, but Harriet, who plays Summer, I adore. Um, Have you got a bit of a, a father-daughter bond with Harriet going on? <laughs> or, or you're just colleagues? Do, do you get protected? No, we don't, or Matilda or Harriet? Harriet. <laughs> <laughs> um, Harriet is far more mature than I am. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if if you ever do a, 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 a podcast with Harriet, she will tell you. <laughs> Every time Harriet sits down on set, I make a fart noise. I go, <laughs> Every time she sits down, she like rolls her eyes at me like, oh my God, like just grow up. I mean, it's 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 ridiculous. She <clears throat> she's a beautiful human being, she's a beautiful young lady. And we have a great relationship. Um <clears throat> I would say I I I'm I take the piss out of her more than I father her. <laughs> <laughs> I, I also love I also love the relationship that Billy has with Todd and, and has done over the years. I and mean, I'm I'm wondering how long it's gonna take for Todd to try and wheedle his way back into Billy's life once Paul succumbs oh, to his condition. <laughs> oh goodness knows. Oh my god, as I said, that's that's the writers. I have no idea. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> It's been such an interesting journey with the character of Todd and Billy. It went, you know, when I think back to when I first joined the show and Todd really kind of it just took the piss out of him and was mm. very much, you know, like, oh, God bother her, you know, very sort of dismissive of Billy's views and 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 his faith. And then, of course, they ended up falling in love and having this yeah. mad, passionate relationship. And then ultimately so that fell apart and then after adopting a child and you know <clears throat> so goodness knows where where that will if indeed that will ever develop back into something else I don't know yeah I quite enjoyed um Billy and Sean as a couple right at the very beginning as well mm. but um it's a know. very different relationship I, I mean you know as the viewers have got to know Billy over the years I'm also I've also got to know him you yeah. know as, as the as the writers flesh these characters out you know when you when you initially cast for the you know a show like this you're given a brief of who this person is but it's it's relatively small yeah and then of course as time goes on that is fleshed out with backstory and and all sorts of like where they brought in Billy's brother Lee mm. Um, and then you suddenly discovered a huge amount about Billy's past. And then when they did the, 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 the story about Susan Barlow and all that, suddenly you discovered more about Billy's past. And so as an actor, you're continually learning who this person is and why they became the person they are now. And then ultimately that, that changes how you play them and, and ultimately who they are in that moment. So, I mean, I would love to be there in another 10 years. And if I am, I wonder whether I'll look back on where I'm playing Billy from now and 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 he will be a different person to who he is at this moment. I I, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, you mentioned earlier as well about um, the fact that you sometimes you go weeks, months without um, working with other people on the cast. Is there, is there anybody who you'd like to have some scenes with that you either haven't done for a long time or, or maybe not at all? Oh my goodness! I mean, yeah, there isn't anybody that I wouldn't like to work with, really. <laughs> I tell you, who I, I'd love working with, but it's for all the wrong reasons. Is Simon Gregson because oh yeah, I, uh, I love Sai, and we get on in real life. We get on like a house on fire. 
Mm. set we can barely get through a scene without giggling <laughs> and that is joyful it's joyful um i love working with chris gascoigne i love chris chris and i see each other outside of work a lot um and he's he's a beautiful man and um i like the dynamic between peter and billy um especially with the whole susan thing still lingering yeah, of course. I'll tell you who else I love is Jodie Prenger. Oh, yeah, isn't she brilliant? Prenger. Oh, my God. Just joyful. Joyful. I, w- I, I would love Billy and Glenda to hang out a bit. Billy doesn't have a lot of mates. Like, he's proper Billy no mates. So <laughs> I, would, I would love Billy to gain some friends. Yeah. And I think I think what Corey does brilliantly is pairing characters that are really opposite and 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 finding the sort of interesting sort of moments that that those opposites bring. Mm. You know, you had Carla and Roy, for example, like totally opposite characters, but mm. this beautiful pairing of these two characters that was just it was you know, um, I mean Carla and Billy. <laughs> so Ali and I are really good mates. In fact, we're we're going on holiday together in, in, in yeah. And but when we play, when we're together as Daniel and and Ali, like we're just us. Mm. And then when you stick us on set, and it's Carla and Billy, because we know each other so well in real life, I we do, neither of us kind of know how to yeah. <laughs> what to do because it's like oh my god like. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. So, I, I mean, maybe I mean Carla and Billy would be a, quite an interesting pairing. Yeah, I, I, think. I don't know what the story would there would be, but I don't be, know. But Carla's yeah. so cool, and Billy's so not. <laughs> that that's I don't know. I think that would be quite an interesting yeah. Uh, mix. Yeah, yeah. So maybe, I, I yeah maybe Carla and Billy. That would be yeah. cool. <laughs> I want to see I want to see Granny Spellman come back and and cause a bit of havoc for Billy as well because she was she was a force she was of brilliant wasn't she wasn't she, she brilliant so good, so good. yeah yeah <laughs> she was brilliant yeah, yeah. And yeah until we've heard that the characters died off screen there's there's still the possibility <laughs> that sometimes well, they say that Summer's gone to visit her for a bit don't they if uh, if if Harriet's been off screen for a bit it's like oh she's been visiting we've never Granny. met Billy's mum either no that's so, true yeah. Mm. So there's always a little bit of room there for potentially something mm. to come yeah, in. Sure. Who knows? Who knows? Yeah. So nearly nine years, you say you've been on Coronation Street. So our podcast has been going just a few years longer than you've been on the show. And, and I would say that since the podcast has started, Billy is one of the characters that we think has been, you know, the most significant of the, of the new characters, one of the most complex characters. Did, did you think when you joined all that time ago that you would still be here going going strong all these years later was that the plan to stay as long as you could well i think as a jobbing actor which i am mm-hmm. um i don't think you ever really think well certainly i don't think beyond the length of my contract it's yeah. you know i i as i said been doing this 30 years the the I I there isn't a genre that I haven't worked in you know from movies animation theatre yeah. musicals like I've I've worked in such a large variety of 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 stuff <clears throat> that I don't think I ever and when I initially started the the show it was a three year option so it was a six month contract yeah. with. That was six months on the end, and then potentially another year and another year after that. Mm-hmm. It's only if they decided to pick up the option, and I decided I wanted to pick up the option. Yeah. And initially, I thought oh my God, three years in the same place. I'd never, as I said, never stayed anywhere longer than yeah. two years. So I thought three years. <laughs> oh my goodness! And I was living in London at the time, so I commuted from London for the first six months. And then decided to move to Manchester. Now I've I've always loved Manchester. I don't know what it is about Manchester, but it's a nice I, place. It's, a nice it's place. incredible. I came up here in two thousand and four to do a play at the Royal Exchange Theatre. Yeah, and I have no idea why. 
but I knew within about three weeks of working here that this is where I wanted to be. Mm. Um, and I ended up buying a flat in Ancoats um, and sort of moving up here. But I, by that point, I was in Emmerdale. So I was I was uh, commuting from Leeds to, to Manchester. I did live in, in Leeds for a bit, but uh, I spent a bit of time here. Um, and I, I don't know what it is about Manchester. I was I was just drawn back. And then even after I left Emmerdale and I moved back to London, I, st I kept getting jobs back in Manchester, Waterloo Road. And then, uh, then I was doing a play at the Lowry. Mm. Then I just kept being brought back to Manchester. And it was like Manchester was just kind of, yeah. you know, bringing me back and bringing me back. So when Corrie happened, um, <laughs> I'd, I, 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 as I said, I was living in London. Um, I commuted for the first six months and then thought, right, I mean, it, it costs a fortune to travel backwards and forwards, to live in two places, which I essentially was at the time. So I scrapped off London, moved up here. <laughs> and I couldn't be happier. I love it up here. I mean, I, I genuinely, I've absolutely fallen in love with Manchester, the people, the place. And I've properly made a home here. Yeah. I think even if I wasn't in Corrie, I would stay living here now. Like there's no, there's no way that I would move back down south. Um, <clears throat> but in terms of the length of contract, I don't think I've ever really. It's about, you know, it's like touching wood. You want to like, I would, I'm happy to stay at Corrie. I love Corrie. I think after, because I'd had a 21, 22 year career by the time I got to Corrie, I'd spent my life living out of a bag. Yeah. Spent my life traveling. I'd lived all over, all over the world, all over the UK, constantly traveling. The beautiful thing about Corrie, and maybe this is just my age, <laughs> is that I now have a work life balance. I get to wake up in my own bed. I get to get my pants out of a drawer rather than an overnight bag. I shower in my own bathroom. Yeah. Not, I'm not constantly chasing the next contract. I'm, you know, I feel like I've got three dogs. Like I come home to the dogs and, and, you know, and I, it's, it's, there, there is a, there is a work life balance. Whereas when I was just jobbing all the time, the the I, I I sometimes I wouldn't be home for nine or ten months in a year, yeah. and I you know traveling from one place to the next. Um. So Corey has given me a a, a life on a, as well as a career. Do you mm. know what I mean? Like it's yeah. it's it's both. It's a balance of both. And um, your mum must be pretty proud of you as well, being on a on Corey. She well, of course, she loves it. She loves it. Of course, she does. <laughs> but as I said, she loved it before I was even in it. So yeah. it's not it's like made it weird for her, has it? Seeing you and it's like, oh, is that Dan? Is that Billy? I think so. I think because she'd seen me in so many other things prior yeah. to me going into it. <clears throat> and as I said, I you know, <clears throat> with every contract that's offered, it feels like a gift because it's like, oh my god, okay, they want me to stay. I'm happy to stay. My opinion on things in terms of career is I, I suppose very different to how it was when I was in my, you know, teens or twenties. I think I'm, I'm so happy at Corrie. I'm really happy there. And therefore my opinion is why would you change that? Yeah. I'm happy. I get to be creative. I get to hang out with people I adore every single day why would I, why would I change that? If ever I became unhappy there, then that would be my reason to not be there anymore. Sure. Um, and again, maybe that's age. I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I feel like my career has been beautiful. I've had, a, I've, I've had some incredible experiences, done some amazing gigs, worked with and met and, and, you know, worked with some wonderful people but I'm, I'm so happy at Corrie. So I don't know why I would ever give that up. 
because I I wake up in the morning and I'm so excited to go to work and I get and then I get to come home and to my own house and my dogs and my partner and I'm like why would I why would I not want that as my life like it's absolutely bang on well I know there's a lot of Billy fans out there that'll be happy to hear that Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> and thank you so much for coming on the podcast today. It's been oh, you're welcome. lovely thank you for chatting me. with you. We, we talked about the sad stuff and the happy stuff. And I think we've, uh, I, have, I've, I think we've learned a lot about you as well. So thank you. Oh, good. Okay. <laughs> Best of luck with, well, uh, with the, rest of, the rest of the storyline. Yes. Oh, well, we'll see. I mean, we'll see. You know, yeah, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cheers then. Bye-bye. Thank you so much. 